Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheet. Today we continue our inventory project in Google Sheets with the help of Google Apps Script and I've already received several comments to help me improve this system. So here I've been writing them down and there are a couple I, I want to try today. The first one is I'm going to reduce the conditional formatting. Last time we did a conditional formatting for all the row where it can help us alert when there is no stock or where there is few stock remaining. The problem with this, as correctly stated by some of the viewers, is that this may prove heavy for the program if I have a lot of products. So here I have 16, but if I have 200 or 1000, maybe this may slow down the system and I, maybe some of you have seen a bar here, a, a green bar that is the one that loads all the formulas, all the calculations and it may last longer to load. So the first thing we're going to do is this looks very nice, but I'm going to make it simpler so that it does not slow down my sheet. That is the main thing I need to look for performance. That it looks nice professional it's good but if it comes at the cost of making my sheets lower so it's not a good thing so here i'm going to go to format and conditional formatting i'm not going to remove them i'm just going to modify them so the range is the same but the, i'm not going to do a custom formula i'm just going to do much simpler we're going to say that if this is equal to zero then apply that's it, but I'm actually I'm not going to apply to A to F, but only to E, only to the stock column. So this is E1 to E1000. Let's click done and I'm going to do the same for this one. E1 to E1000 and we're going to format only if it is less than three and let's say done that's it so it's a much more simpler conditional formatting that works still and does not consume that much calculation power okay so this is the first thing i wanted to do thank you for the suggestion the second one is I don't want to allow sales if a product does not have stock. So let's see if we can do it not so complicated. I don't want to have to insert a lot of new columns. So let's see if we can do it without that. So to do that, I, I, I'm going to do a thing that I've been postponing since the beginning of this project is I'm going to separate input and output into different sheets. As I've told you before, in a number of videos. This may prove simpler to have the input and the output in the same one, but for many other things and much more complex things, I think the best thing is to have input and output separated, purchases and sales in different sheets. So I think this will, this will prove useful for a lot of future things we're going to do. Let, let's take a couple of minutes to do it. So I'm going to duplicate the sheet and call it output and this one will rename it with double click input okay so next we're going to order this so that input is first and output is first so i'm going to select all my range with data with ctrl shift right and ctrl shift down then i'm going to select data sort range and advanced race range sorting options we'll say that the data has a header row and we're going to order by input output in alphabetical order so perfect and i'm going to leave only input select and the rest i'm going to delete it let's delete all of this perfect now let's go to output and we're going to do the same select everything data so range by input output but now inverse in descending order so let's say sort and we're going to delete again all of this 
which is not output. Now, I can remove this column C. I'm not going to need it anymore. I can remove it with right click and delete column. Here I'm going to do the same, but I can use a shortcut. It's Control Alt minus. Okay, so it looks good. Just one thing missing. We're going to extensions up script. Remember, we did a script last time, so I need to modify it a bit because I was counting on having only one sheet. So let's say we're going to do it first for input and the active column. It's not going to be three, but it's going to be one. When I select my reference, I want to have my price. This is one. And here I did an, a conditional to know where do I have to to copy the the price if it was a price or a co or a cost. So I'm going to delete this, and we're going to say that in the in the case of cost, it will be the column six and the column where the cost goes has also changed because i removed one column so here it will be column the four number four so this will change to four okay but now i need another an else if for when it is output first let's see if we can remove some of this i'm going to delete this variable i don't need it anymore and all of these we can take it out and I'm going to do an else if and here the second one will be out pro will be seven and the column for pasting still is four but not in the input sheet but in the output sheet so this should work still so I'm going to save and let's do just a couple of tests here I'm going to select this and apparently it works. Let's confirm it's the, the proper one. Perfect. And let's do another one. Okay. But before we carry on, let's see if our stock is correct or if it has changed. So let's go to our stock and apparently it has changed. So something here has uh, damaged in my formula because I was counting on the columns that had input. So actually this makes it easier because I'm going to remove all of this and all of this. I, I'm just going to do a unique function for my column A in the input sheet. That's it. Very simple. So this fixed the product, but now I have a problem in my input, output and stock. So let's see the input again. I was doing a sum ifs when in the input column there was the value input, but I don't have anymore the input column. The nice thing about doing it with some ifs is that I'm just going to remove this and I'm just going to leave one condition and it should work. Okay, the same for output, but in output I have to do an extra thing is that I'm not going to do it anymore from my input sheet, but from my output sheet. So here. I'm going to replace this with output and it should work again. But finally, I'm just going to take these two cells and drag them down. And I can drag them down further with Control Shift down, Control D, so that it works for all my future references. Okay, now I'm good. And I can go back to my original task that was to prevent from selling or doing an output when there is no stock. For example, I can use this wizard hoodie H H O 001. As I have it now, I could go to my outputs, do a new H O 001 and buy five. And here in my stock, I would have negative five. So this is a, an error that we could use our system to prevent it. So let's delete it for now and here. So what we're going to do is data validations, advanced data validation using formulas. For this, I'm going to do down here a formula. I'm going to do a VLOOKUP where I'm going to look for this reference 
in my stock and see if it's zero. Actually, I'm going to see if it's larger than zero. So let's do VLOOKUP. I'm going to look for this A19. I'm going to look for it in this table in stock from A to F. And I want to know the value of the stock column that, that is number one, two, three, four, number five. And I always close with a zero. That's it. I cannot do it here, so I'm going to remove my data validation for now. I already have a data validation in this column, so I'm going to change it. For now, I'm going to remove the validation and again do my formula. We look up A19 in this table in column number 5. I want exact answer, so this is why I put 0, close. And that's it. So I have it zero in this case, in the case of HO001. So I'm going to put an equal sign and zero to see if this is true. Actually, I want to know if it's higher than zero or greater than zero. In this case, it's false. And if it's false, I don't, I don't want it to be able to insert anything. So my data validation will be this formula. If this is true, if it's larger than zero then you can input any quantity okay so let's see i'm going to copy this i'm going to remove actually i'm going to remove all the data validation here so data data validation remove validation that's good and here i'm going to create just this data validation i'm going to say it's a custom formula and the custom formula is this one we've already created Let's reject the input and let's go save. So here, if I try to put one, it's going to say I'm not able to do it because HO001 does not have stock. And we can further uh, do, do a message. My data validation, show validation help test. And I can do a more explanatory text where I say it appears you don't have stock or this reference. Let's click save and again let's try to put something and it will give me my message. Now I'm going to copy this validation, select all the cells where I've already have data. The problem with this validation is that where I already have put something for my for this reference it will also put an error message. So it's not an error because it won't eliminate my data, but it will show me a mistake. So I'm going to do edit, paste special, data validation. And here you can see that in my past purchases of HO001, I have a warning sign. So it does not mean that this purchase is wrong. It just means that this one is wrong, that, that I don't have a stock for this one. Okay. And finally, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to copy this. Control shift down, control D, so that I have my data validation in all of my car. Okay, so two things to fix here. The first one is, let's go to our data validation. And actually this can be greater or equal than zero, because it could be zero. It's right now, as I had it, my stock could not arrive to zero, just to one. Okay, because it was greater than zero. So if my stock was zero, it would raise my alarms, but it's not a problem if it's zero. The problem is if it's less than zero. Okay. So this is the first thing I'm going to, again, copy all my validation so that I don't see these warning messages I don't like. Edit, paste special and data validation. Okay. So I think this works great because it will even work. For example, when I hear something, it's not zero, it's two like this Mastodon t-shirt and I try to buy four, my VLOOKUP will automatically change this formula to minus two and I will not be able to, to buy this. Okay. There is one minor quibble here and it's, for example, if I, let's say I have this Mastodon t-shirt. Okay. And I'm going to buy three and in stock I have two. So I'm going to go here to my output, select my TS004 and let's try to buy three. So it allows to buy three, but now after buying, then it's going to say it's invalid because 
my stock is now minus one. Okay, so let's see if we can improve our formula so it tackles this case. So let's go to data, data validation. And here I'm going just to change it a bit. I'm going to say, I already have my VLOOKUP. Okay, in this case, the VLOOKUP gives two. So I'm going to subtract from my VLOOKUP whatever quantity I'm trying to put. In this case, this is the cell C19. So if I'm going to try to buy three, this is going to be negative. So let's say subtract it and then tell me if it's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, this means that even after buying it, I'm going to have stock. Okay. So I can also change my message so that it, it reflects this. I can say it appears you don't have enough stock of this reference to be able to output the desired number. I don't know, something like that, of units. Okay, so now if I try to do three, I will not be able, because I only have two. But if I do two, it works. With this formula is that if it tries to do it again, to validate it again, it won't add up. Because if you try to subtract the two again from zero, it will give you zero, okay? So it's the same thing as before. It shows me this strange red arrow that I don't like, but the important thing is that it only allows to input when my stock allows to, okay? So first, let's copy our validation to all my column, Control shift down two times, edit, paste special, data validation, and you can see now that in many of the cases, I still have my red flag in the past purchases okay so now if i go to my wizard hoodie and try to buy one i'm still not able to the formula still works okay so this is it so this is what i wanted to do today so i hope you enjoy it and now i can check this out not allow it does not allow to sell a product if it does not have stock so in the next video we're going to do this nice thing that a lot of you have been asking and is the fifa system so i'm going to explain what that is and how can we implement it in our system. As always, thank you so much. And if all these things are a bit um, complicated to do, you can just go to the Patreon page, download the, the latest template, and you can start from there, or copy the code, or copy the formulas, copy the validation, whatever you need. And if not, you can support me a lot just by subscribing to the channel and being sure to hitting the notify button so you know where there's a new video and hopefully it's the next one of these stock system management so we can improve it every time. Thank you so much and see you next time.